Okay, in this video I'm just going to really quickly show you how to take an area and break it up into uh, decent polygons by using the method of uh, basically trying to get an equal area or a representative area for a bunch of different sampling stations. So the first thing we're going to do is, is do an easy one, a very easy one, with only two data points, two places where the uh, water level would be collected. What we want to do is just draw a little dotted line between the two stations. And if I really cared, I'd use a ruler, but uh, this is going to be an approximation anyway, so this will do the job just fine. Now what I want to do is do a perpendicular bisector, which basically means I'm going to find the halfway point. And again, if I cared to pull out a ruler, I could do so, but I'm just going to eyeball it right now. The halfway point goes about there, and I want to draw a line perpendicular to that line that goes through that central point, thus perpendicular bisector. This one, because it is so simple, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, I'm going to go over that line, and you'll see why in the more complicated diagrams. I'm going to go over that with black. And essentially what that means is everything to the uh, upper left side of the, the area is going to be closest to point A, sampling point A, while as everything in kind of the right lower side is going to be closer to point B. So anything over here in this area, anywhere, is going to be closer to B than it is to A, and likewise anything on the side of this line will be closer to A than it is to B. So this represents the area for A, and this down here the area for B. Now of course they can't all be this easy or we'd uh, have nothing else to do in this class. So let's try just a, a slightly more difficult one. Let's do one that has three data points, or three sampling stations. So I'm just going to draw a quick dotted line connecting each of these three to each of the others. And same thing, I'm going to do a perpendicular bisector for each of these three points. And again, I'm pretty much just going to eyeball it. And now the uh, pink lines I'm going to draw, I might overshoot a little bit, but that's okay. So let's do the point between A and B right here. And if I do a perpendicular bisector there, Really that line is saying anything to the left of it is closer to A, anything to the right of it is closer to B. And if those were the only two stations, we'd be done. Uh, what we can do though is also look at the uh, relationship between B and C. And I'm just going to draw a perpendicular bisector there. And even though I know it's not going to be used, I'll carry it on over to that air, uh, left side. And again, anything above that line that I just drew is closer to B. Anything below that line is closer to C. Finally, I'm going to uh, look at A and C and do a perpendicular bisector between the two of those. Just going to look something like that. And anything on the upper left of that line will be closer to A than it is to C. Anything to the lower right will be closer to C than it is to A. Now what I want to do is actually highlight a couple of those lines just to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm representing all the areas fairly. So from here to here I'm definitely splitting A to B. And over here I'm definitely splitting B to C. And then finally I want to split A and C So I'm just going to do a line like that. Now if you focus on just those three lines, let me actually highlight them with a slightly darker color just so it's a little more evident. Try not to pay attention to the pink anymore, just focus on the blue. If you're anywhere up in this region, this little place isolated by this blue line and this blue line, Anything on that side is going to be closest to A, closer than it is to any of the other two stations. Anything in the top right here is closer to B than it is to any of the other two stations. And anything below this blue line here, anything in this area, is all closer to C than it is to anything else. So now you can see that it got 
much more complicated, or at least significantly more complicated when we went from what two points to three points. Let's try one that has five. What I'll do to try to make this one a little bit clearer is not to include all of the lines, but only the ones that are actually important. So let's take a look at points A and B, and we'll do a perpendicular bisector for those. I'm not going to extend that line all the way to the bottom because I can already see by the time I get to about here, I'm much closer to D than I am to A. So I know that this is not going to be a line that matters. While we're at it, let's do A and D. The middle point's about there. So the perpendicular bisector there would look like this. <laughs> And I could continue it over there, but again, by the time I'm over to about this area, I can see anything that I draw is going to be closer to B than it is to D, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Let's do one between B and D. And a perpendicular bisector there. It's going to come down that way. This is going to be a little bit of an approximation. You'll notice that right around here, they don't seem to meet up particularly nicely. That has more to do with the fact that I'm not measuring these precisely or using a ruler. Um, if it was actually done exactly properly, it was perfect perpendiculars and perfect measurements, that all three of them should meet at a point. Uh, let's do points B and C. And we'll drop a perpendicular bisector in the middle there. And again, I'll, I'll stop drawing by the time I get too far down there because I'm already getting closer to E. Another point between D and E. The order I do these really doesn't matter as long as I get them all done eventually. And a perpendicular bisector there. Again, I could extend it up further, but I know that I'm already going to be into area B. And I think the last one that I need to look at, actually there's a couple I need to look at, uh, C and E. Halfway point. Perpendicular bisector, approximately. And finally, B and E. And it looks like it would be approximately here. And again, if I had done them lined up properly, they should have come to nice, nice points instead of doing anything wonky where the lines start to intersect. So now I can break this into five regions. This region up here in the top left corner of the diagram will be A. B is this pentagony shaped region. C, the part over here on the top right. D on the bottom left, and E on the bottom right. And again, if you want me to make it a little bit more clear, I'll just go over it in blue. So that's how you do a Thiessen polygon. The truth is doing them uh, the first few times you do them can be quite difficult to get them exactly accurate. I'd recommend maybe doing it in pencil so that you can erase it. But once you've played with it a little bit, I think you'll just, uh, you'll be able to figure out which lines matter and which ones don't. Um, for instance, you can see that the line I started to draw here was quite irrelevant. Um, all it said was this is closer to A and this is closer to uh, D, but both of them were closer to B, so it didn't really matter. If you do mess up, the biggest thing to look at is to just say, is there anything in my polygon, so let's take a look at B for instance, is there anything in this polygon where I think a point in there is closer to a different station? So 
is it possible that this is closer to C or possibly to E? And I don't think so. If you find a point that looks like it is closer to another station, it probably means that you highlighted the wrong line and you just go back and highlight another one. Once you're done that, you've got your thesis and polygons and you can start calculating the area of each using the grid method. Good luck.